The following podcast may contain spoilers. Hi, this is Jonathan Kenny. Welcome to the Treading the Path of Heaven podcast. Um, we are doing a special episode this week. We are recording live from PodCon. Well, live I mean, to well, us. Live to live us, to yeah. There's, there's people here. <laughs> It'd be difficult for it to be live to you, although not really. We we have, we have were offered to live stream this, but there's not really a way for us to have warned you in the past. So, oh well. <laughs> anyway, um, this will be a kind of a shorter one um, and also a special one because unlike unlike always, I'm not joined by all of my co-hosts. Uh, I am Jonathan Kenny, the main host, and we also are joined by only... Me, Seth Thompson. Uh, we're actually um, the only two that made it out to PodCon this year. Hopefully more people next year. But yeah, that'd be uh, fun. The, um, there is a booth here, and so we're going to record a short episode about a book that I read. Yeah, Seth-centric. You guys ready for this? It's the wow. first one. No, it's not. It's like the third one now. A little centric. Well, yeah, centric. That's fair. Um, my, the book that I was reading it was a suggestion from one of our listeners. Actually, it was um, one of our iTunes reviewers, but I can't. Oh, you know what? I can't. It's not going to be on the iTunes anymore since we switched our hosting. Oh, but yeah. uh, one of our iTunes reviewees, reviewers yeah, friend of the show, suggested that we read everyone else's returnee. So um, I. I immediately picked it up and started looking through it and there were a lot of aspects about it that um that i really appreciate like i like game systems um a very korean book okay cool korean novel uh who's the author uh let's see why am i looking at just this guy's um wow i've got lots of information about yuel han the the guy well that's good yeah. All right, well, forget the author for now. Um, we'll get back to that. G- give, us a, give us a premise of the book. What's, what's the main thing about? So a um, normal college student is uh, hanging out one day and uh, goes outside and notices everything time-wise has stopped. So are we talking like uh, Persona 3 Midnight Channel, like everything's weird, or just know. everyone's just kind of time frozen? I don't have that reference. Uh, perhaps everyone's just frozen. Either way, no, actually everybody's gone. Um, oh, okay, everyone's there's, there's nobody there anymore. Just uh, the whole present. the whole world has now been emptied, and um, he kind of just wanders around for a bit, wondering exactly what happened. He's like looking for his parents first, obviously, uh, and then uh, an angel shows up and explains to him, "Hey, man, uh, why are you here? You're not supposed to be here." Uh, everyone else on Earth, you see, got uh, taken to another world to train. Uh, because there's this big cataclysm coming. Mm-hmm. And so we were preparing everyone on Earth by throwing them onto this other world. Some of them were going to die for sure. But, you know. I'm so glad there are these kind gods that are so willing to, to train us up for coming cataclysms. Oh, yeah, man. When a cataclysm's coming, you got to be prepared. And if you have a god's like help behind you, might as well. Kind and strong quotation marks here, given that almost always it's, yeah, it's not. training by slaughter. But well, in this case, it's training by extreme loneliness because he's <laughs> stuck on Earth. So, uh, all right. So, like, with everyone else, do they, do they give any information about... So, the angel just there? explains, like, their, their training, uh, and he, he asks, like, well, why, wasn't, why didn't I get picked up? And uh, God just didn't notice him. Oh, that's got to be rough. Like, yeah, he's just he's one of those characters that's always in the background. He is a notable unknown. Like you, you, he's just it fades wherever he is. If you're not looking directly at him, you don't know where he is. All right. Um, so, <laughs> so God misses like him, and he's just stuck on Earth by himself. But there is this angel lady that has come to be like. To, to clean up, as it were, and saw him and was like, ooh, we fucked up, so we're going to we're gonna uh, do what we can to hide this. And you know what? You and me, let's just hang out. Okay. So, uh, he, uh, so he gets taken around uh, the earth and ends up doing, um, like, different kinds of training. So he uh, learns how to, like, be the best blade blades smith so, and 
Just by him, like, reading books? Or? Yeah. No, he goes to all the libraries and reads all the books. Like, so... Does what? he just have... Oh, yeah, time stops, so he's time's not aging stopped. or anything. So he's yeah. just he's just having a Groundhog's Day-esque training montage. Nobody said anything to him, and he kind of lost track of time, but it happened I over mean, how the would course you keep track? of millennia, and he... He, he thinks maybe a hundred years have passed, perhaps, but it's happened over far, far longer. And so he's got all these like skills that he's been training up for years and years. And then, so, so, okay, he goes, he walks across the world. Like he walks to where he's going most of the time. He takes a, he takes a, a like he steals a, a ship once to get over to the United States so he can get to some libraries there. Okay. Uh, but he, he just, he, he absorbs everything there is to be absorbed on Earth. Like, uh, uh, he's, not, he's not the end-all, be-all perfect dude, but he's got skills that you can just gain with time and knowledge. Okay. Because uh, that's all he's got, time and knowledge. So at the, at the, up at the point to you, you had read to, was there, um, had the returnee parts, like, oh, had, yeah. had people started returning? Um, so... So, okay, so he's um, back home and uh, is perfecting some stuff, and the angel notes to him, like, hey, man, um, they're coming back soon. If you want to get ready, got like a day, they're coming back. Uh, so he goes back to his house and is just kind of waiting when his parents show up. His, uh, his mom and dad were also in the other world, and they came back fine. Uh, his dad probably was not the best. It's it's hinted at multiple times that like his mom was an ass kicker, but his dad just it was along for the ride. Yeah, he was just kind of <laughs> there. I, I actually think they got put on different worlds because people got scattered. So like they got they got thrown to different subsets or whatever, and so they didn't really have an interaction for the. I think they were gone for maybe two years. Was the was what they felt? Okay. Um, so he got way more time training than anyone else. Yes. Okay. And so what everybody's come back with is, like, magic skills. Okay, of course, yeah. Yeah, and um, he does not have magic skills. He, but, didn't, he didn't go well, yeah, to the magic place, so why would he have magic skills? Like, so uh, part of, part of the, the, the comedy of this book is uh, him trying to hide the fact that he doesn't actually have any magic. So by just, just being real good at things? By just being a beast. <laughs> so he'll like punch something real hard and they'll be like, wow, what spell was that? And he's like, punch. Um, yeah. Don't punch. you know the punch the, spell? The punch spell. I'm not familiar with that one. Well, I learned it in the planet that I was on. Well, what planet was that? I've met a couple people from a couple different planets. Don't. Oh, that's interesting. They were all sent to like kind of different places. Yeah, yeah they were. Um, okay, so. They come back, um, governments start arranging people, as they do. Governments start claiming the strongest people. Mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, absolutely. The, the strongest Korean dude is... Um, yeah, as soon as they're superhumans, that's what defense spending becomes about. For sure. Um, so, uh, Kim Il... Uh, oh goodness. Hang on. Kim Il-Han, or Yu Il-Han, Yu Il-Han, um, ends up like just showing up where there are things happening and just destroying and then leaving before he can get any of the rewards. Sometimes like on the second one and third one, he'll like stay around and butcher them. Cause he got really good at butchery too. All the, all the animals were still well, there. All right. I, I just assume he's got like max skill and all the craftsmen and, and he's, everything. He's ridiculous. People like people that have been around these creatures for the two years or whatever that they were on the other planet. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know how to butcher them as well as he does to like get all of the all, all the mats essentially. That so he, he just gets more drops. Than he everyone. gets crazy drops and he gets <laughs> such strong stuff because he knows like, oh, this uh, this acts exactly like a turtle shell does. I know exactly where to cut, 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 and like pulls it off. Done. Okay. Makes himself some new armor. Um, That's fun. So you you mentioned um, towards the beginning that this has a game system. How does that play? Um, is it is it more focused on the returnees, or is does he have a game system that activates when time freezes? No, he is outside of the game system. Oh, like, okay. That's actually really has, interesting. I was yeah. wondering. Oops. Everyone else has it. It's. Um, it's just him that is like brute forcing his way through the through the game. Essentially, it's not a game; it's the earth. But like, he's brute forcing his way through it at this point. Um, he's he's just such a he's such a fascinating like 
maybe not. Maybe he's just a little, like, from what I have read, maybe he's just a little, uh, um, like, base level, a little shallow. But from what I have read, like... He 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 really loves his mom. <laughs> like, yeah, what, what's what's his character? Was he is he is he angry about this experience? Is he just kind of? He's like- he's um, pretty chill, honestly. He doesn't want to be recognized. Um, the first time he goes out and just kicks ass, he puts on an Iron Man mask and just like beats the hell out of everybody and then leaves. And so like state television has started calling him like the Iron Man of his area or whatever. And then um, he could run real fast, like just assume he's great at all the stuff. Uh, so they started calling him Sungdane Bolt. Um, like you, you say Bolt, Sungdane was the yeah. college that he was going to. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so he, he's like gets frustrated every time he hears it. Uh, because like that's not the name he picked, and he had an Iron Man mask on. <laughs> Why'd they pick that name? Like frustrating on frustrating. Um, it's just it, it. That sounds like it's kind of typical uh, Korean web novel humor in terms of the the frustration being about uh, misunderstandings, not getting called what you want to be get called. Yeah, just just like uh, frustrations about like names not being right, or uh, you know, like a. a giant misunderstandings between like the main character who thinks he's doing one thing and how everyone else in the world he's just oblivious to the fact that everyone else in the world sees it a different way yeah yeah he's he's the only one who sees it in his very cool way like that being said in in this particular case it sounds like it's a little bit more justified given that he is legitimately in a different situation than most of the other people he he is he doesn't have the the magic skill to be able to survive in most situations so he just powers through it and um and, and What's, what's honestly impressive is that people that were, like, notable in the other world. There's this lady that they simply refer to as Empress mm-hmm. um, that is a, like, she, she was a, an ass kicker in the other world. And when she came back, the Korean government immediately recognized her as, like, top three. You're, you're one of them. You need to stay in Korea so you can fight against these waves when they come. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, you cannot leave. Uh, and then she goes to LA, like because that's uh, you know you do what you're gonna do. Um, probably offered her a better deal. Uh, honestly, I think she was there for something else. But he, like, uh, um, our main character ends up in LA because he hears that there, like, a gate is opening, or it's a dungeon that's opening there, uh, the, like a cataclysm okay. wave kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's some, sounds similar to kind of the the Earth part of a uh, Soul Station Necromancer. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. Um, so he, uh, he he goes to stop this gate because he's got this angel lady, this angel lady that was with him the whole time. Oh, that's cool. Um, she, the entire, like the whole millennia that he was stuck on Earth, and now that everything's back in, uh, back to regular time, mm-hmm. uh, she's gone, and it's freaking him out a little. Like he he he's had this one guiding hand behind him for millennia and now she's just disappeared and is replaced by a smaller more annoying angel that is not so the Rita or whatever his angel friend that helped him for the the millennia um, she kind of maybe fell in love with him and maybe the other way around too Uh, and then immediately (laughs) she like got plucked off of earth and got another person put in there and he's just frustrated that the person next to him isn't the person that he wants to be next to him. Okay. And uh, it's a little angel that shrinks herself down to a small size and hangs out on his head. She's just kind of a dick. Like, it's 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 entertaining. That's one of the fun character dynamics. Okay, so compared to some of the other Korean novels we've reviewed on the show, what, what really lets uh, this one stand out? What's, what's different about this one? Um, I would say, I mean... All of the books we read, it seems like the MC has some kind of overarching difficulty. And um, I, I just, the the way uh, uh, our, our MC's like, difficulty is presented in this book is such a position of weakness, but similar, like it, it's, it is two things simultaneously. He is the strongest person on earth and the weakest person on earth. Mm -hmm. Like he can beat the crap out of anybody, but if somebody were to cast a spell on him, he's done. Like the most he can do is set up magic defense. And he has been where I am in the book has been, uh, begging, 
begging them to give him the ability to to work with mana, but they're afraid that it's just going to make him explode. It's because like that, that's you know you go to the other planet and you yeah, no, it, strength it, train there. Like it, it makes sense. No one on Earth has currently developed magic, so there's probably some issue. They're with it. very afraid that it's just going to make him explode. So they instead have been giving him just like little little treats and uh, like little gear bonuses and. Um, Th they can do a thing the angels is who I say when I mean they um, they they can make a, a a magic item like to the nth power stronger just kind of by putting a bead on it or whatever and okay. no one on earth um, their their power cores from I mean, your it's, it's Dungeons it's and Dragons standard. plus one enhancement yeah, it's I get the it. standard uh, but they're essentially laying like a plus three on okay. and nobody else on Earth can really do that also he's a master craftsman so by default all the stuff he makes is like an, at a plus one yeah um, it's it's pretty wild um, but it's he he was a he's a tortured person like okay. he he very it much seems to be a, a pretty common theme in Korean novels uh, yeah. Uh, that has to do with kind of the, the, the general feel of their, their the, the issues that the Korean people have with their own culture. It's fair. It's not, see, like, I don't have as much of a Korean book, like, background mm -hmm. to lean back on to. So well, it's, it's just that the themes in them tend to be a lot more depressing. Uh, not, not like, and not to say they don't overcome them. There's usually an arc where the, there is a depression and the people succeed, and then, like, that gets overturned because they worked hard. Sure. Which, I mean, like, I get that. That's a really good moral, and I think that fits in pretty well with American writing as well. But, um... Uh, it's just so frequent that you run into situations where it's like, you know, the main character is in crippling debt from a situation out of his control. Sure, like uh, sure. the, you know, the, the, he inherited the debt and because the grandmother who was taking care of them is, enfe is enfeebled, they're not able to go sign off the debt. So they inherit the family debt. Like yes. just like all sorts of these like random situations where people take advantage of the main character and all these things to make them distrusting. And then that builds their personality. Well, uh, a millennia of being alone will drive you insane and yeah. also make you like just a ruined person. I mean, yeah, like solitary is usually only so his <laughs> it's his usually like, measured in, in days or months, not yeah, exactly. So because we understand the health risks of that, so I, I can only imagine that must have seriously scarred him. His parents um, notice, but don't. His parents have noticed, but aren't completely concerned. It would seem his mom knows that something's up. Well, I'm sure for them they were they were concerned that he was gone or wasn't. You know, sent out. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure he didn't die, yeah. like somewhere else. I'm sure seeing him back there was a relief at some level. Uh, the okay, so just t to cap off where I am in the book, so you guys can know how far I got. Ah, uh, um, right, right. it's not it's not really that far, you guys. It's like eight, 85 chapters, maybe. Um, uh, at my last, the last chapter I was reading, the um, the MC was trying to convince the angels to send him to an off-world dungeon because it would make him stronger and there's a lot of stuff he can fight there and like he needs the power course to make better stuff he really likes uh he's he's made these slingshot weapons that are essentially um ah oh god there's a specific name for them that i can't remember now but it's like a it's like a like a like a almost like a rail gun but for uh, uh, slingshots and it's intended for you to put it on something and then railgun into it so it's like a so it's like a, a like a breaker like um okay yeah like an armor breaker like a um piston or yeah I know what you're talking about yeah. like the like the attack that big o used yes exactly um it is uh it's one of those that he is just a pile driver yes a pile driver that is exactly what it is uh he is he is embarrassing very high level monsters by just walking up and pile driving them in the face and uh it's very entertaining so uh he's he's just a a, a guy who's good at all the stuff i know mm -hmm. that that's describes a lot of mcs well it uh, does but honestly it sounds like he's got a lot of a, a wider base than most do the typical korean mcs tend to have like a thing that they're really good at um i.e legendary moonlight sculptor or sure. overgeared where they they have one talent. They're they're good. Well, they're either good at the thing they're doing, or they become good from the things around them. But like for in, for an overgeared, for instance, the main character is a blacksmith, and so everything that he does, although he's good at basically everything because he builds items to make himself good at everything, it all ties back to his blacksmithing ability. For a legendary moonlight sculptor, you know, it, everything is all of his opportunities and all the things he gains are birthed out of the things he does sculpting. 
So it, it's but so it sounds like in his case, I mean, there's there's kind of bladesmithing, which sounds like it's maybe doing a bigger part than some of the other ones. But it sounds like he has a much wider base of skills. He, yeah, you know, than a lot of the typical Korean main characters. Essentially, anything that he could learn, he did. So like he he does have the widest possible base of skills and now he's just got to stack these like very specific fighting particular monsters things on top of him now i'm probably gonna have to try and pick this one up because i'm really fascinated by this concept of um the the maximum potential of the the extant skills on earth like taking the the abilities of and ignoring mana ignoring angels and all those things and taking just the things that um you know we already have the ability to do as humans and Imagining how it would actually stack up against people that had magic powers. For sure, it's like and if if we if we were executing perfectly, could Earth take on a, a world with magic? He's got plenty of opportunities. He doesn't fight other magic users directly, but he fights alongside of them. And with the way they are astounded at shit that he does, I am sure that he could take them. I haven't seen any direct fights yet, but I, I'm sure that they will be interesting when they happen. I know it's weird to say with a uh, you know like a, a written media, but at the reading about the shocked faces of people as they they, they look at the the main character's absurd achievements their jaw the, dropped the oh. the writing that's necessary to like set that up and and just the the exposition to draw that one moment where the jaw drops is just one of the most satisfying parts of reading these translated novels to me um you know I, i'm i'm glad that uh i want to know who suggested it um I w i'm glad that whoever suggested this did because it was actually um, very much up my alley. You you kind of have the idea of who I am pretty well down, listeners. Uh, yeah, it was, I believe, suggested pretty much for Seth. So. It was full plate jacket. It was full plate jacket. Our yeah. our good su our good supporter man, full plate jacket. Thanks, full plate jacket. Thanks, full plate. Um, well, this was our fun live episode. Yeah, we're gonna kind of start wrapping it up so that other people can use the recording space. We'd like to have a big thank uh, big thank you to Live U uh, for letting us use the recording space and setting everything up yeah man this was a very cool opportunity that we would not have had otherwise so um i, I yeah very much appreciated um if you enjoyed our um uh, review of this please feel free to check out our other um episodes we've got a lot of books that we've talked about uh, uh you know covering chinese uh, japanese and korean translated novels we've got more books to talk about too and, and we, have, uh, we have a lot more coming um yeah. if you'd like to reach us you can reach out to us over gmail or twitter uh, uh our gmail is tiger.rollercoaster at gmail.com and our twitter is tiger coaster so um yeah feel free to reach out we're always happy to hear from you guys yeah, but otherwise, um, we really appreciate all the support you've got. We know we've been a little sparse on episodes lately, but we're uh, we're working on changing that very hard. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, um, that's a big change. You will see it. Trust me on that. But otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great night. Woo-woo. Tiger Roller Coaster Productions. Tigers are scary. You try to get off.